So what do we say to the dead? Surprise, motherfucker. Welcome back guys, I haven't really done a video on Game of Thrones and this is the first time I'm ever doing it so this is a little bit interesting because right after the moment between Arya and the Night King, after my excitement died down a little bit, I kind of just went like wait, what, That that's it? Like what? what's next? So in parts I'm asking myself the question, you know, was it worth 8 seasons of hyping up? Since season 1 we've seen the threat of the Night King, we've seen him like in bits and snippets, we've seen him in Bran's visions, so I'm wondering this whole time, like, you know, was this entire build up to this moment really worth the battle of Winterfell. Don't get me wrong, the battle of Winterfell was very exciting. It had me at the edge of my seat because my anxiety was through the roof from the beginning of the episode. So let me start by saying that the opening of this episode was actually pretty well done because we start off from Samuel's point of view where he's walking through Winterfell and everybody's basically getting ready for battle against the dead and everybody is freaking out. And you can see that they're shaking, they're scared. And I kind of like that. You see Melisandre like strolling in with her horse and Davos kind of like seeing her like yo I'm supposed to execute you if I see you again but Melisandre is there to help she lights up all the Dothrakis swords with fire and gets them all riled up which is pretty awesome you even see ghosts in there and they're charging right at the dead alongside Jorah Mormon and I don't know where all their flames are gone so you're like oh shit did they just die and yeah basically they got wiped out that quick and I mean a lot of them like retreat they fall back you can even see Jorah Mormon saying like fuck that I am not dealing with that a little weird because I did not see ghosts come back so I hopefully they didn't kill him off off screen which would suck but we might see him back in episode 4 we see Danny and John at some like mountaintop they're kind of overlooking the battle they're supposed to kind of wait for the, the walkers to come by and then like set them on fire but Danny kind of looks like she's scared so she takes off and then John follows with his dragon and they kind of like set fire to the white walkers which I thought they were going to do that the entire time but no for some reason they're like oh hey the Night King's right there which is kind of cool because the Night King is giving orders from the freaking sky on his own dragon so that was a pretty cool moment but then they kind of both take off chasing him which was kind of a little bit odd because I didn't like the way that they used the dragons in this episode I, I wish one would have stayed down and then maybe like John chase after the Night King in his own dragon although the Night King like sets off this like crazy winter storm you know the dragons can't see but I still think that one of the dragons should have stayed down there while the other one was kind of like hunting or, or you know trying to get the Night King but we do get some pretty cool visuals where the two dragons are like literally full above the clouds and like you can see the moon and it's just an epic shot going back to the ground we get our first death you see ed dying by protecting sam and it sucks because all of sam's friends from the night watch are basically dead which just leaves him and john brianne and jamie are like piled up with freaking walkers like every scene that they're in i swear there's like 10 walkers on each person which is insane because at the end of the video you're like wait i feel like one of them should have died but no we get more deaths like later on but you also see the hound which he's, he's freaking out because there's a lot of fire and he's like terrified of the dead he's like yo we're not gonna win this shit until he sees Arya struggling against some walkers so he's like fuck it I gotta go help her and Arya herself has an awesome moment in this episode where she's like kind of like sneaking around Winterfell inside of the castle she's like trying not to get caught by the walkers and trying to get herself killed but we get another death where Beric basically sacrifices himself for Arya he throws his sword of fire into one of the walkers and kind of just leaves it behind and you know he gets pretty messed up he gets stabbed by like trying to hold some of them off and then you know they're they enter this room they kind of hold them off and Melisandre again surprisingly shows up and is like telling them that you know he basically served the Lord of Light's purpose and that purpose has been served so that's the end of Beric and this is kind of foreshadowing here but he she tells Arya you know like brown eyes green eyes blue eyes and at this point you know with all the commotion going on with the battle it, to me it didn't hit me right away but like when she said blue eyes I'm like okay like what the walkers or what but I didn't realize that she meant the Night King and Arya kind of just takes off and that's the last we see of her until the very end we see a couple scenes in the crypt where Tyrion is basically getting hammered because nobody really wants him at the actual battle so he's kind of drinking it away he's kind of pissed off he's just talking to Sansa so we get a couple good scenes with them in the crypt and honestly I felt like somebody was important was gonna die in the crypt because you know the Night King eventually raises the dead but we don't really get anything like that. Grey Worm himself is terrified you can see it in his eyes and, and I've never really seen Grey Worm like scared of anything and he kind of leaves his men behind I mean obviously the Unsullied have been trained to like not fear anything and at this point Grey Worm makes a decision that he drops the trenches leaves his men behind and now they have to light it up and again Melisandre MVP I would say second after Arya lights up the trench to 
you kind of hold them off for a little bit because eventually they get over that trench which kind of sucks because that, that was kind of pointless to be honest and then we get another death this time of Liana Mormon which sucked because I really liked her character little bear going up the freaking giant she gets her bones crushed <laughs> you can hear it and uh, she just drives a dagger through the giant's eye and just kills him and I think that moment was awesome Danny and John in the sky eventually knock him down and we get another cool scene where Danny basically gives the biggest Dracarys I've ever seen to the Night King but this moment was pretty cool because the Night King just looks back at her and smirks he's like yo you died because flames won't do shit at me which made me question that because I mean up to this point I haven't read the books I'm not a big follower of the books I've just been watching the show since it started so I don't even know what that means like is the Night King a, like a Targaryen or something because the flames did nothing to him now although it's like non-stop action like a bunch of battle scenes you know it was kind of hard to see it at times and I know a lot of people have complained that you know it was too dark but honestly my TV was fine I right before I started the show I hit my dynamic resolution on my TV and I feel like that kind of helped because it lit up everything so that was pretty good I was able to see the battle itself pretty well I mean I it was really hard to pick out characters whenever like there was like whites and like just soldiers fighting each other it, it just was there to show you know the battle and the commotion and the tragedy that was going on but I did like the moments where the episode actually toned it down where we were focusing only on a couple of characters to see you know what was going on so I'm glad they did that because if it was like a full-on battle that would have gotten boring pretty quick now one of the biggest bummers that I have in complaints because <laughs> I really expected John to battle it out with the Night King John kind of like sees the Night King walking towards Winterfell and you're like okay this is the moment that it's been building up to because till this point John has been the hero of the story and you see John charging into the Night King and the Night King kind of just turns around and you're like okay this is it this is going to be the big battle of the episode but no surprisingly the Night King was like nah you know what I'm just gonna let the rest of your dead army do the work for me but what's really strange is that he revives them you know you get people reviving inside of Winterfell and you also have people in the crypt coming out which it wasn't really anybody that was important you know not, no, nobody in the crypt like I, I mean I didn't expect Ned Stark to come out without his head but still you know I felt like there wasn't like any symbolic dead member rising back to life but that moment when he does that I was like damn why did you do that like why could you not just face Jon Snow I felt like that at least the fans deserve that moment between Jon and the Night King but obviously we don't get it which sucked but the other part is that all the whites that uh, get revived kind of just stare at Jon and nothing really happens and then I don't know where Danny comes in with her dragon and just rescues him so I'm really you know questioning like okay so now what's gonna happen you know it's, it's Drogon Danny and Jon but no Jon is like yo I want to go check on Bran and you also have Theon protecting Bran so you're like okay so Jon's gonna eventually get to Bran somehow he's gonna go through this path of walkers and finally get to him but no that that's not the case again because as we learn which actually it was very well done because this whole time I'm like shit Jon's not gonna get to Bran and Bran's gonna die because at this point Theon is left all alone with no hope and I like the moment that Bran and Theon have because Bran is like you know Theon thank you for everything you've done this has always been your home and Theon's like well fuck I got nothing else left so let me just charge one more time at the Night King and see what I can do and obviously he fails epically and gets killed and then my other like gripe I have with this episode is that Bran doesn't do shit in this episode he works into some ravens that go on uh, the Night King's uh, dragon's back and it's like okay what are you gonna do now like the whole time he was warging into ravens and I didn't get the point of that maybe they'll explain this maybe in episode 4 I really hope so but up to this point you know John is trying to get there John is stuck with Rhaegal I think or Viserion whichever one of the dragons it was that gets turned into a white he really can't escape and it looks like at one point he's about to kill the dragon or get inflamed by the dragon which would have been cool because you know if John is really a Targaryen would that really affect him since well he's half a Targaryen I don't know if that even makes sense but I did want to see that since we already didn't see a fight between the Night King and John but then we get another death aside from Theon and Lyanna and this time it's Jorah Mormont like damn cuz you two yeah both of them were out I felt bad that was probably one of the most saddest deaths in this episode because you've seen Jorah love Danny from the beginning and you know it's like he went out protecting her and you can see Danny like crying her eyes out Drogon almost gets killed because a bunch of whites start stabbing him in the back and you know he kind of flies off and like shakes it off so at this point the Night King walks in to get Bran and basically kill him you know Theon's already like on the ground dead I don't know something about this episode that I kind of didn't like was like this scene it was very well built like I mean in the back of my head I completely forgot what was going on because all, all I was focused was on John trying to get to the Night King the Night King already there about to kill Bran 
everybody else pinned against the wall and you can kind of tell that everybody at least had like five like whites to one person so it's like Brienne, jamie like it, it was weird that none of them died so like their suit of armor became insanely powerful during these scenes but what made all this up for me in a way was aria coming out of the dark you see a walker like kind of just like, like what the hell was that was that the wind and no it was aria aria jumps up in the air night king kind of like chokes her holds her up in the air does that little trick that she did against Brienne, drops the dagger to her lower hand and stabs him conveniently where the children of the forest like implanted that dragon dagger and literally kills him just with one blow and that's it that wraps up the episode so now my question is was it worth the wait like as, as a person that hasn't read the books and i actually watched it from the beginning since game of thrones came out on hbo you know i've waited year after year after year for this moment and i don't know it you know that's where i think about it it kind of is a letdown because not a lot of like major players died in the episode and i'm not that's like not one of my biggest complaints but the fact that the night king died from the first confrontation he had with one blow ends it all think about it like, I mean, that's all it took to kill the Night King. So it, it, it makes me wonder, like, shit, John should have just waited there, you know, and just let the Night King come. Like, what was the point of the whole battle? But that's just the way that I think. I mean, like, I feel like they could have gone a different route about it. And I kind of <laughs> like the fact that Bran gave Arya the dagger. I feel like he kind of knew. Kind of like pulling a Doctor Strange, you know, like telling Tony, like, hey, you know, this is this is our only chance. So he, he kind of like gives her the dagger knowing that she's the one that's going to kill him. And the creators of the show do talk about that. They say that Arya was the one that was going to kill the Night King and you know I appreciate that Arya was the one because she's the least of the group that I expected it to you know from happening like she just kind of snuck up and just ended it all so I love that I love that Arya was the one I just don't like the fact that it just took one blow for all this to happen so I guess that's it that's it for the Night King so that that's my biggest complaint about this was that you know from all the moments that we've seen the Night King and the, the whole build up throughout each season I don't know I'm like 50 50 with it like I feel Feel like i'm satisfied with how the battle ended like the ep episode itself wasn't terrible or anything like that but i just feel like it completely didn't live up to its expectation not saying that the ter episode was terrible i'm just saying that i wish there was more from the night king rather than just kind of like showing up and uh trying to end brand's life you know like i'm saying like the biggest thing for me was the night king not facing off with Jon snow like at least give me a, a scene where like Jon snow almost dies or dies or danny dies or, or something you know like i I don't know why I, f I felt like Game of Thrones in a way held their punches with this one but that's what I thought about this episode guys let me know what you guys thought was it worth the wait you know was it worth the hype I think if you binge watch the show it wouldn't affect you as much as me because you know I've watched it over the years so like it's been building up for a very long time so let me know in the comments make sure to follow me on Twitter and on my Instagram channel so until the next video stay tuned